Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. Ever wondered how we can make our application cloud native ready? By actually having observability, traceability, monitoring on all of our application, having service discovery and health checks? Well, with the .NET Aspire, we can actually accomplish all of that. In today's video, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be upgrading our existing application to take advantage of the .NET Aspire. We're gonna be seeing how we can implement all of these nice functionality directly into our application through our Blazor application as well as our APIs. We're gonna be having a full end-to-end -end implementation for this functionality. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. It will really help the channel. As well, if you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, grab your cup of coffee and let's get started. So before we actually get started into building our application, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be seeing the end product, we're gonna be seeing the dashboards, the observability, the dependency of our applications, we're gonna be exploring them, and then we're gonna be going through step by step for how actually we can upgrade this into our existing application. And we're gonna be discussing every single component that we're gonna be utilizing in order for us to get there. So what I have right here is basically, it's going to be the main structure for my application. I'm going to be having a front end, and this front end is going to be powered by Blazor Web Server. On the other hand, I'm going to have my back end, and this is going to be my normal .NET uh, Web APIs, where basically everything that the client does from the front end side is going to be sent to the API. The API will process it and then send back the rest. So basically, we're going to have these two to get components together linked uh, directly in order for us to have a client-server relationship. So if we go to our web browser, this is gonna be the main UI here. So we can see here, this is our Blazor web server. Um, I'm able to list all of the drivers that I currently have. I can add a driver. So for example, I can add Muhammad Rawand, number 23 and date of birth 01, let's say the year 2000 and save driver. We can see I have added a new driver here. I can edit the driver. I can update the information from here or I can actually delete the driver directly. So we can see here that I have a fully fledged Blazor application with a full CRUD operation where I can actually add, update and delete my information. Now let's take a look at the dashboard that we're gonna be actually trying to get or create. So here, as you can see, I have my projects running. We're gonna be seeing here that I have my app service, which is gonna be my backend. I have my front end running. We can see here like the endpoints that I'm gonna be utilizing. So right now, if I click on my uh, backend, as you can see, because it's a backend API, I don't really have any endpoints. If I go here for my front end, we can see I got my front end for my application. As well here, let's make this a bit bigger so we can see the information which is showing. We can see here I have environment and I have logs. So if I click on environment, I can see all of my different environment variable for every single application. I can go down and basically customize them, uh, the information or see the information that I need directly from here. And as also I can have logs. So as you can see here, I can see the logs of my Blazor application directly through the console. I don't really have to go to Visual Studio, to Rider to see all of these logs basically I can directly get them from there and I can switch between my front end and my back end, all of them directly happening into my dashboard without actually having to go into the source code and actually check it from there. As you can see here as well, it gives us a really nice uh, UI where I can actually explore this. We don't really have any containers and executables at the moment, but if I go here to projects as well, we can see here that these are the logs that we have. I can see traces. So all of the requests which is happening, I can actually tra trace them back down. So all of these are loading for the front end. And as we can see here, I can actually separate the API and the back end directly. So I can sort that this, for example, we're calling drivers. I'm utilizing the API as well as the front end. If I click on view, we can see how this request comes into place. So first of all, we load the front end, we load the Blazor page, and then we do an API call. If I click on this, we can see all of the requests which is went into this API call. And you can see here all of this out of the box, all of this available for me. The level of information is really, really amazing and basic it allows me to actually understand what's happening in my application if anything goes wrong i can actually understand from there so on the as well on top of all of that uh, if we take a look at metrics so if i go here and let's say that my api server i can take a look at metrics for my application directly from here i can see the number of the, the different uh, http requests that i have utilized i can see the different status code that the service generated as well, if I go a bit down, I can see the different utilization of the memory, et cetera, et cetera. And all of this is actually being, again, provided for me out of the box without me having to do anything. Now that we have seen the like amazing things that we can actually get our um, cloud native enabled with .NET Aspire, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna actually see how we can convert our 
complete uh, applications from to in order for it to utilize this we're going to be going through step by step of how we can actually configure our web apis as well as our blazor as blazor application to be directly cloud native ready utilizing the the not aspire so now what i'm going to be doing i'm going to go to rider and within rider right now as you can see i have a very simple uh, application structure i have my api i have my data services as well as i have my entities and my single page application so my api here is going to be a normal uh, api so if you click on driver we can see i have controllers i have my all cloud operations i'm utilizing a sql light and basically to store my information i have inside my program.cs i have the different configuration in order for me to allow my uh, is a web application to communicate through cores i have my uh, database services everything is already configured for me to utilize as well if i go back to my single page application i can see here that it's a blazer web server application if i open my pages we can see here that i have my drivers listing page i have the logic here if i go down to the program.cs as you can see here and what i'm doing is i'm actually injecting my http client to utilize the driver services and basically uh, I'm utilizing a hard-coded, and this is something that we really need to pay attention to, a hard-coded endpoint for my service, for my uh, API endpoints. And basically we can see it's a normal .NET 8 Blazor web server application. And right now, if I wanna run this, what do I need to do? Basically in order for it to work, first of all, I need to make sure that my uh, API endpoint inside my uh, spa application for my api is actually valid as well if i go back to my web api inside my program.cs i need to make sure that the endpoint for my blazer application for my course is actually valid so i'm allowing allowing them both to communicate with each other and the reason that i'm mentioning this right now because this is some of the complexities and i want to say the misconfiguration that we might face into when we're trying to actually build a client and a server application because basically we have to make sure that we are configuring these manually and we're going to be seeing how .NET Aspire will actually help us um, avoid all of these different configuration problems so now let us run them and see them running together so I'm just going to come here I'm going to put run in debug mode so now that my API is running I'm going to go down into my spa application debug as well so now if I open it up in our web browser so inside my spa application, as you can see, I have my drivers. I, don't, I have here my different drivers. I can delete a driver if I don't want them. Let me delete those. I can add a driver. I can say George Russell 63. Let's make the year 2000 and save a driver. Oops, there's a breaking point. Let me remove this breaking point. And let me remove the other breaking point. And as you can see, I have George Russell enabled. If I want to update it, I can put here, for example, George Russell 1, save driver, and we can see it has been updated. So all of that is now actually working. Now we have a completely separate front end and a back end communicating together, which works fine. But as you can see here right now, I don't have any of the telemetry. I don't have any of the observability that I had before. Now we're going to be updating this application in order for us to have that. So let's go back to a rider. I'm going to stop both of them. Yes, stop all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my terminal. So .NET Aspire has been released part of .NET 8. And within this release, .NET Aspire has been released as a preview, which means that it's not by default enabled inside the default .NET 8 installation that we currently have. And that it, what we need to do in order for us to get this is we need to actually install the .NET Aspire workload, which enable us to get these features. And this is going to be quite simple. Using a, a few commands inside the terminal, we're going to have all of these capabilities available for us. So let's see how we can do it. So what we're going to be doing here inside the terminal, I'm just going to put .NET workload install Aspire. I have already installed this on my machine. I'm going to get maybe it's already installed. But for you, it might be like a couple of minutes to get installed. Permission, so let's make it a sudo. Although I have already done it before. And as you can see, it has informed me that it has already been installed before. So it's not going to do anything else. It's basically skipping everything because it's already being installed on my machine, which is fine. For your machine, it might be different because what you need to do is you need to install it. Uh, it might take a minute or two to do so. But once you are ready, now we're going to be actually seeing what that this command gives us. So if I write here .NET new list, as you can see here from this list, 
I have something now called Aspire application, uh, Aspire starter application. So the Aspire starter application here, it's give me a full uh, back end and a front end and all of the wiring already done for me in order for me to explore. The .NET uh, Aspire application will actually give me the capabilities of integrate my existing application into Aspire. So it will allow me to wire up whatever application that I currently have into the Aspire framework that I need in order for me to get all of the nice features that I wanted. And this is what we're going to be using. Instead of using the starting starter application, we're going to be utilizing directly the .NET application, uh, Aspire application. So all I'm going to be doing here in order for me to get this nice information, I'm going to put .NET new Aspire. Let me clear this up so we can actually see it better. I'm going to put .NET new Aspire and let's give it a second and now we can see it worked so once we have done that now if I type on LS and I want us to compare what do we have currently inside our solution to compare to what we have here so here we can see I have four project which is the API data service entity and spa and on the other hand when I run the .NET Aspire another few project has been added so I, as you can see I have something called service defaults now and have something called app host we're going to be discussing what these do and how do we utilize them as well we can see it created a solution file i don't really need this solution file so i'm going to be deleting it and i'm going to be adding these new project into my current solution so i'm going to click on right click add existing project and i'm going to be adding the app host so that's going to be the first one then i'm going to click add existing project and i'm going to add the service default perfect so now that i have these I'm going to first go into the service default, explain what this is, and then basically we're going to be going into app host. So if I open my service default project that we have just uh, added, we can see all I have here is a single class called extension. So let's open this class. Inside this extension class, we can see here, this looks quite familiar with our, if let's open this up, inside our program.cs, our host builder. And this, there's a lot of similarities there. Why? Because basically all of these that we are currently seeing are extension methods that are currently available by Aspire. And these extension methods, if we take a look at what they are actually doing, they are actually configuring the telemetry that we have seen before, the health checks that are available for us. It's allowing service discovery in case we have different services. Service discovery will be able to actually detect on what are the endpoint those services are running on and basically inform this to the application which needs them. We here we have the different HTTP client configuration and that will allow us to have all of the different resiliency that we need. And this before we used to do it through a, a different libraries, like we used to install poly, we used to install a different, different NuGet packages in conjunction with poly in order for us to get this resiliency. Now with Aspire, we'll get this directly out of the box. Now, if we go here to the configuration, we can see that we have open telemetry, which is a standard telemetry log available. It's directly embedded within the extension method. And basically it is directly integrated with the logging. So we're able to see it there, uh, see, it, see it there, sorry. We're actually able to see the telemetries as well. If we scroll a bit down, we can see all of the tracing and the metrics that we needed. And all of that are directly built in uh, to our uh, application, um, or to this library that we currently have without us having to do any of the extra work. So all of this configuration has already been baked in. Now we need to actually utilize it. Let's go down a bit more. We can see here that uh, more, more configuration for the telemetries, for the health check, all of that, again, available for us out of the box. Now, this is, this is the first one, which is service default, which gives us the capabilities to actually run uh, or basically have all of this available for us out of the box. Now, if I go to app host, which is the other one, now app host is quite, uh, it looks a bit different because within app host, we can see that we have a program.cs, which means that it is going to be a, an application which is going to be running because we can see here that it's utilizing a new kind of builder. So you can see it's utilizing a distributed application. If you go to programs, we can see it's a web application because it's an API, but within an app host, we can see now we have something called distributed application and a create builder. So distributed application is a new type because it basically catered for different services running simultaneously and basically from there it will be able to connect with these different services these are called distributed application and what we're going to be doing is rather than actually running independently our API and our SPA application, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running app host and app host will be responsible to initiating our API and our 
uh, spa application and this is going to be the crucial part so we don't really manually go trigger our endpoint and our uh, front and our back and to run uh, our app host will do that for us and this is and and from there it will take the actual management of our applications and as well we can see here that we have our app settings which is a normal app settings to our normal web apis and all of that is basically directly being baked in now that we have these two services available into our into our solution what's next what do we need to and it's quite simple to be honest so first of all what we need to do is we need to add references to uh, service default into our web apis and into our spa application and the reason that we want to do that is we want to have these capabilities directly available into every single one of these applications so we want the telemetry we want the logging we want uh, uh, monitoring directly available into our web api and the blazer and the way to do that is we just need to reference our class library into our uh, current application in order for us to take benefits of this so let's do this right now so what i'm gonna do here inside my uh, formula one api I'm going to add a reference and I'm going to be choosing the service default and I'm going to be clicking on add and for my um, spa application as well I'm going to click on add reference and I'm going to be taking also service default so once I have done that uh, as well I want to add a different um, references so for my app host i want to add the spa and i want to add the api as well at the same time so all i'm doing right now is just some of the wiring for this application to communicate and we're going to be seeing a diagram of how these wires work together so from app host i'm going to be adding a reference to my api and to my spa as well and i'm going to add them like this so now that we have added this wire, let's take a look at how this diagram will look so currently this is going to be my structure i have my a formula one spa which is my front end i have my formula one api which is my back end and currently these two communicate together like this so these two currently without aspire this is how they communicate together they communicate uh, together they actually do the communication without relying on any other services so what we want to do right now is we want to remove this and we want to actually see the new layout so now what we have is the service default is actually being referenced inside our spa as well we have our service default is actually referred to inside our uh, web servers so we have within our front end we have our back end and um, the service default has been referred to again what we have also done is we have referred our spa into our app host and our uh, api into our back host as well app host as well okay so now what we have done is we also referred our app host into our front end and a back end so now instead of running this uh, spa separately and our api separately what we're going to be doing is we're going to be focusing on running our formula one app host and then by uh, once we run this application so once we execute it let's get a check mark so once i execute this I started running so what's gonna happen this will initiate my api and then it will initiate my front end if any subsequent service i'm using also i can refer to it here and it will actually initiate them and then from them uh, from that uh, aspect whenever there's a request coming in it will actually route it to the api or the spa and basically the spa and the api will be able to communicate to, uh, with each other through the app host so right now uh, once we do this our spa will be completely agnostic of our api which means that it doesn't really need to know anything about this configuration it doesn't really need to know about the endpoint that's going to be utilizing all it knows that there's going to be an api which is going to be referring to in order for us to get there and this is going to be the main one of the main benefits that we're going to be having here is basically the decoupling of our front end and the back end and basically leaving the main configuration for our app host to do all of the heavy lifting for us so let's see how we can actually implement this within our code so now that i have added the, all of these nice references the next step that i need to do is i need to enable all of the service default functionality inside my applications so first of all i'm gonna go into my formula one.spa and then I'm going to go into my program.cs and after the builder, I'm just going to be adding a couple of lines here in order for us to enable service default. And the first one that I'm going to be adding is going to be builder dot uh, service default, quite self-explanatory. And basically this here, it means that all of the services inside service default that we have seen here, it will automatically be injected into my front end directly when it runs. And the other one that I need to add here is before the app.run, I'm going to put app.map default endpoints. 
And this will basically allow us to have all of the default endpoints that we have here inside my extension. So if we can see here default, as you can see here, map default endpoint, and these map default endpoint will allow us to have the health checks directly available through us. So once I have the app dot add map default endpoints, this will allow me to have all of these health checks directly available into my application without extra work that I need to do. So now that I have added these to my front end, I want to add them to my back end. So if I go back to my program.cs, I'm going to add it here, builder.addServiceDefault. So it's going to be the first one. And I'm going to put here app.mapDefault endpoints. Perfect. So now the first hard part, which is going to be configuring this um, service default with my spa has been completed i'm going to be utilizing a blue check mark for this so now that this has been completed i have configured this here and i have configured this here great i'm going to be removing these because we don't need them right now so now the next step that i need to do is i need to actually configure app host to know how to communicate with the spa and api and i wanted to tell and i want app host to know that there is a dependencies between uh, my front end and the back end so it needs to make sure that my backend is running in order for my spa to actually um, execute all of its commands correctly. So let's see how we can do that. So now that I have all of this up and running, I'm gonna go to my app host inside my program.cs. And inside here, my program.cs is gonna be a pretty straightforward approach. Because if we take a look at this, we can see here that we have the normal structure, uh, almost the normal structure as our web application. We have a builder which uh, creates our application and then we are, run it, are running it. It's not really more complicated than that. But what we need to do here is we need to, first of all, tell app host that it needs to take, uh, whenever it needs to run, it needs to run the spa and it needs to run our API. And we need to also tell uh, our app host that there's a dependency here. And this is gonna allow us to take all of those different configuration like uh, dependencies, uh, server discovery, all of us can, uh, all of these conf different configuration will be enabled to us from this one. So let's see how we can do it. So first things first, I'm gonna put var I'm gonna put here as backend. This is gonna be my backend that I'm gonna be utilizing. And then I'm gonna put builder dot add project. And here I'm gonna put inside my add project, the uh, project name, which I have, which is gonna be my API. And let's put formula one underscore API. So that's gonna be the project that I'm gonna be referring to. And I'm gonna give this a name. I'm gonna call this backend. So here what I'm doing is basically I'm telling Aspire that whenever it needs to run, it needs to add a project. And this project is going to be my Formula 1 API. So if I open this, let's go to the declaration. And we can see here that my Formula 1 underscore API is something which has been automatically generated for me by Aspire. We can see it refers to my Formula 1 API application. It even gives me the full path on my current machine of how it's actually going to find it. So we can see here it, it gave it all the right different uh, endpoints for my Formula 1 DLLs, API DLLs, etc., etc., and my CS approach, etc., etc. So now that we understand how this works, now what I want to do is I want to add my front end. So I'm going to put far front end equal builder dot add project and this one gonna be formula one spa and I'm gonna call this front end which is great so now I have my back end and I have my front end available and if I take a look at this, basically what I did is I connected them both. But right now, although I connected them both, I did not tell app host that my API has a dependency, my spa, sorry, has a, or front end has a dependency on my API. So how I can do that is quite simple with a few letters. I'm just gonna add here dot with reference to backend. And now when I add with reference to backend, whenever is Aspire running my application, what it's gonna be doing is whenever it needs to initialize my front end, it's gonna make sure that my backend is up and running. It's gonna take all of the different configuration that my backend service will actually generate, like the endpoints and all of, all of the different uh, data that it needs, and it will automatically inject it into front end. But that's not all. Right now, if we do this, 
our application will actually run and we will be able to see the result that we need. But we're going to be facing uh, some problems. And what are these problems? If I go here to my spa application, we can see here in order for my application to run, it's actually directly being hard coded into the local host uh, and port 5410. But because I'm running my application from the front end here, I'm not really able to know what is going to be the application port that I'm going to be utilizing the endpoint. Once I deploy it, I will not really have control over that. So I cannot really inject it from there. What I want to do is I want to delegate those mapping to Aspire. I want Aspire to take the initiative in order for it to actually map this information for me and in order for me to get this information. So how can I do that? Pretty straightforward. And this is why naming this here is really important. So I'm just going to copy here back end. And I'm going to go down to my program.cs and inside my program.cs all I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be removing this local host with the port and I'm going to be updating it with backend as simple as that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my app host and I'm going to right click and I'm going to put debug. I'm going to run it in debug mode. And here, once it actually starts, we can see it actually initiated all of the different environments. And this is what I want. I want to take the endpoint for the dashboard application, which Aspire generates. So I'm just going to copy this endpoint, go to my web browser, and I'm just going to put it here. So once I go to this endpoint, what I'm going to see here is I have my back end and my front end available. Both of them are running. Both of them are using the uh, latest version. And what I'm going to do is if uh, this is my endpoints that I currently have, so we can see here, these are different. Just make this a bit, let's make this a bit bigger. So we can see here that my front end is running on completely different port from my back end. And what I'm going to do is if I click on view, this is for my uh, configuration. I'm going to click on view here. This is going to be for my logs. And if I want to open this up, I can just click on this endpoint and we can see here that I have my drivers available. So if I click on drivers here, we can see it loaded. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change this one here from drivers to drivers.aspire, something like that. So we can see it's getting the latest version. So I'm going to stop this application. I'm going to go to my pages. I'm going to go to the drivers page and I'm going to update the title from drivers to driver aspire. I'm going to call it one, two, three or so. I'm then going to run Aspire again, uh, sorry, the app host again. And now that's running, let's go back to my web browser. If I refresh this right now, we can see I got driver Aspire 123, which means that I'm taking the latest version. And through that, as you've seen here, I did not do any of the configuration to wire up my front and the back end of this information is automatically being run from my back end. If I add a driver, let's add my, uh, Schumacher driver number. I can't remember. I'm just going to put uh, 81 and 2000 save a driver you can see here we have make edit delete i can delete it if i go back here reload if i go to projects choose my backend we can see all of the different endpoints which has been executed and the different logs which is coming up my front end we can see what am i calling and basically you can see i'm getting the drivers i'm doing a delete here which is the delete command that we have done when I created a driver at the post, where is the post? So this is the post when I created the driver. If I go down to metrics and I choose my backend and let's see here. So this is, for example, the active requests and I can see the different schemas for it. And uh, as you can see here, all of this has been available for me out of the box. All I have to, all I had to do is just add Aspire to my application. Currently, I don't have containers or executables. If you're interested in seeing those, just let me know and I will make sure to add a section uh, in the next video where I can actually showcase container and executable. Um, as well, if I go to traces, we can see here the different traces that we have. So here, for example, this is when I do a get. We can see it's actually calling the back end and the front end. So if I click on view, we can see the dependencies of these requests. If I click on this, we can see that it gave me, for example, 200 status code. Uh, we can see the values. Something really important, as you can see, all of these are still in alpha, which is a pre-release version. So what that means that all of these nice functionalities that we have and all of these nice features, all of this honestly like amazing capabilities is still in uh, infancy. It's still very early preview. Let's us imagine what's going to happen from now until one year when this is actually going to be available into general release. 
it's only gonna get better and better from here and all of these different functionalities that we're currently having it's only gonna give us the capabilities of creating much more complex application we're gonna have the capabilities of actually expanding what we currently have and alleviating some of the pain of actually configuring the telemetry the logging across different application the configuration and all of that so we can see that not aspire is going to be a really powerful tool moving forward with any types of development in a cloud native way so now that we have understood all of that let us do a quick recap of what we have done uh, today so first of all what we have done is we had our application which is going to be a front end and a back end communicating together uh, point to point so what we have done is we have introduced aspire we did not aspire once we installed the correct workloads we have basically uh, got two different applications which is service default and app host so these two applications will work together in order for us to have different capabilities from telemetry to logging etc etc health checks and what we needed to do is we needed to add reference for service default into our spa and our API. And once we have added those references, we were able to actually enable them into our source code. Uh, let's go to our rider uh, through our program.cs. So we have added the different configuration like add service default as well as a map default endpoints and once we have done that then we have configured our app host which is going to be the application that's going to be running uh, in order for us to uh, execute our front end and the back end and basically we added the reference to our back end for the front end directly with reference and all of that magic is actually available for us out of the box but do not aspire so as we can see here building cloud native application just got much more easier but do not aspire i hope you like this video please like share and subscribe if you did if you'd like to support me and get access to the source code please consider supporting me on patreon if you have any questions or clarifications please make sure you put them in the comments down below and thank you very much for watching